in this video, we're going to go over my exact Google Keyword Planner strategy when it comes to e-commerce brands, regardless of the niche. Normally, you might be using KPIs if you are a good e-commerce store owner, that is, to determine the overall performance of your KPIs. But what you or your team members don't know is that the keywords that you actually use for your SEO strategy or for Google Ads in general also have some KPIs that you need to be looking at in order to determine if they're good keywords or not. And this is where 99% of e-commerce store owners go wrong. As a result, they're really never able to scale their brand to the level that it should be at. Keep in mind that every single search keyword out there has specific KPIs which it needs to match in order to determine if it's a good keyword or not or if it's even good enough to be used on your landing page in the first place and the more strict you are with this by the way the better it is for your e-commerce brand because as a result you're able to get higher quality traffic and with that higher quality traffic convert more and get more revenue so without actually first jumping into my computer to understand the exact strategy i use to find the right keywords let's first of all go over certain kpis which I keep in mind when doing my keyword analysis and applying my keyword strategy. First KPI is that you need to have 30,000 or more average monthly searches for that given product which you're trying to do is keyword research for in the first place because if nobody is searching for your product no matter how good it is i mean it could be a spaceship that takes people to mars and even if you sell it for free if nobody is searching for that keyword or that specific spaceship nobody is going to buy it and as a result it's going to be a failed product so you need to keep in mind that there's minimum of 30,000 average monthly searches when beginning your keyword planner strategy number two the year over year change that you see which we'll go over very shortly it should be either going upwards or it should be very steady and it should be stable at what it is essentially that means it should be neutral if it is negative or going down specifically that change that's not a good sign the third kpi i really look at is when i search up that given keyword on google the overall competitor prices are around the ballpark of what i would like to sell the product at so for example when i'm applying my keyword planner strategy if i find a given keyword where it's a good keyword but then the products that are appearing there they're only fifty dollars or a hundred dollars and what i'm trying to sell it's for five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars most likely I will omit that keyword and not use it in any way, shape or form within my keyword planner strategy. But now that we kind of went over some major KPIs that I use when using this keyword planner strategy, let's now go into the keyword planner tool to understand the different types of approaches to doing keyword research and how to actually use the keyword planner tool. So within the section right here, when you're on this page, of course, first of all, you want to make sure your language is English. If that's your main given language for the countries you're targeting the country, it's basically all of the different locations which you target. So in this case, we're targeting United States. We're also targeting Canada here. So I'm just going to write that down. And we're also going to be targeting the United Kingdom. So in this case, I'm going to find the United Kingdom and make sure you do the same thing because this is an integral part of the keyword planner strategy. But once you have done that, there's two approaches for you to go with. Now, the first approach is with the start with keywords approach. Essentially, this is where you kind of get a general idea of what your product is, what you're trying to sell, and then search one to three words, which mainly describe your product. So for example, if I was selling the product, 3d printer here i would only type in 3d printer because that does a very good job of explaining exactly what i'm trying to sell and the only reason why i'm even searching via the keyword section is to get much broader ideas of further keywords which i can then use within my description title so on and so forth so you want to keep it very broad here try to be as broad as possible without going way too broad the second approach is by starting with the website directly. So if you already have a brand right here and you have no idea how to start with keywords, because I do recommend you take the first approach if you know the keyword. But let's say, for example, you have no idea what your product is. And for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that my website is Prusa3D.com. So if I open up a brand new tab right here, go to this website, we can see 
exactly what this brand is. So this is a 3D printer brand. All you need to do is copy the URL, go back to the discover new keyword section and just paste it in. Now there's two options for you. The first option is to get rid of all of the kind of slashes here and just write the main URL and then use the entire site. Or you can use any given page on your website to then start the keyword research. We're gonna start off with this kind of approach just to show you an idea of how it looks like. So if Google's algorithm has already understood what you sell and you're targeting the entire website, most likely you will be able to get the right kind of keywords right from the get-go. So clearly we see 3D printers as the one of the main keywords coming up with 550,000 average monthly searches. So Google's algorithm has already found out what this website is about because it has already crawled through the website. If your website is brand new or it, nothing is coming up here, then obviously this is not a kind of a good approach for you in terms of the keyword planner strategy. And what you would instead do is you would go on to start with keywords option. But for the rest of you where, where multiple keywords are coming up, this is the best approach to take because now this takes us into our KPIs, which we talked about. Number one thing, over 30,000 average monthly searches. So first of all, when I say over 30,000, I don't mean over 30,000 for each keyword individually. Instead, you should be looking at this chart right here and getting a general idea of what the total keyword search volume is. So right here for April of 2022, it says total 1.5 million. That's well above 30,000, which means this keyword or this product in general is good enough for Google ads. And we kind of want to check around the time range which we're planning to sell. So recording this video in March and last March of 2022, it was 1.4 million. In April, it was 1.5 million. In May, 1.4. And then June, it was around a million. So even at its lowest point, it's well above 30,000, which is exactly what we want. This is the first metric you want to keep in mind because let's say this metric was not getting met here everything here was below 30,000 and that just means number one your website that you searched up it's not sufficient enough for you to do research but number two if you keep doing this and it's still below 30,000 that niche in general or the keywords related to that product in general they're just not ideal for google ads purposes and it might be better to advertise that product on facebook tiktok pinterest etc etc but this is one of the first metrics i always look at and this brings me to the second metric which is the year over year change now this is what i was talking about this column right here you don't necessarily need to look at the three month change because i personally believe three months is a bit too small to determine a lot of things but a year over year it should either be a positive change now on an individual keyword level or it should be zero percent which is essentially neutral so obviously minus 18 percent this means year over year change is not really performing the best and you can change the time period to a bigger time period to get a general idea but overall it looks like this is in a downward trend for this keyword but again keep in mind that it might simply be because we're in a downward trend for this product's niche in general because if you look in october it goes all the way up back up and then it followed the same trend in june july august so the only reason why i would not use this keyword right now is because at the moment it's in a dropping trend if it were october or maybe even august i would more than likely have used this keyword within my title and description strategy or anywhere else i wanted to on my landing page but it's super important for you to get an idea of how the keyword is doing at this moment based on this year over year change again make sure to only stick to the keywords with zero percent or something that's positive like for example this keyword of course we might not necessarily be able to use it in this case because it looks like it's a branded keyword but regardless it's a positive trend keyword and that's what we're looking for when implementing our google keyword planner strategy but now let's say for example you find a keyword which you really like and you think it's ideal the third and final metric was to look at the competitor prices so let's say for example not this one we're just gonna stick with this one let's say we were selling a slicer prusa and it looks like that's a 3d printer what we would do is we would go on over to a website called isearchfrom.com so that's exactly what we're gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and open up isearchfrom.com and choose the specific country which you're trying to sell within language make sure to choose the right language and then just paste it in and press enter so once you press enter now if you go to shopping we can get a general idea of what this exactly means so obviously it's the name of this product right here it's the brand itself prusa research and let's say you were also selling these kinds of 3d printers now the next step is for you to understand looking at the competitors what their pricing is because if my 
Slicer Prusa key product I was trying to sell for $5,000 Obviously, this is not a right keyword to be ranking for because the same exact product, it's getting sold for $1,099 here and also $800 here. So me coming in to sell this product for $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, it really does not make sense. So you want to make sure as you go down this list of keywords to look at your competitors and to understand what their prices are. And I go over more in detail with this strategy, with my SEO strategy. So you can check out that video after this one. It goes more into the SEO. CEO for Google Ads, how I actually use these keywords within my titles, descriptions, so on and so forth. But for the sake of this video, we want to stick to what we're looking at on a very broad level. But this is kind of my general approach in terms of what I'm looking at when it comes to the Google Keyword Planner strategy. Now I do the same thing if I'm doing it with start with keywords. So let's say you could start with instead, what you do is you just write in the main keyword, which you are selling around. So if you're selling 3D printers, that's exactly what you would type and you would follow the same exact metrics as before. So here we would look at last March to see what the overall trend is and it looks like it was 2.7 million then and it goes all the way down to 2 million which is above 30,000 so that's a good thing then we look at the year over year change only look at those keywords and look into adding them anywhere based on the positive flow upwards or neutrality so it needs to be neutral and then once you start doing your research with i search from again look at the prices overall to see how your competitors are and how you are compared to them so you can get a better understanding of exactly what should be done in that case. But keep in mind that to kind of summarize all of this strategy up, anything that you find via the Google Keyword Planner strategy we're talking about right now, any keyword you find, it should be relevant to what you are trying to sell. So make sure it's relevant to what you're selling. You can actually sell based on competitor prices, so on and so forth. Because really, after you have implemented this keyword planner strategy, the next step is for you to kind of incorporate all of these findings within your landing pages. Because at the end of the day, just using this keyword planner strategy is not sufficient enough. You need to kind of use the keyword planner tool properly. And then from here, do further research by looking at more competitor websites where you can also find more keywords here you can also do some forecasting as you can see on the left side here on the screen you can add them as negative keywords directly you can save keywords so on and so forth but really with the keyword planner strategy you want to stick to either the starting with keyword section or starting with the website section but if you're doing forty thousand dollars or more per month in revenue and you need just a little bit of extra help scaling your e-commerce brand to the next level with google ads go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen. But I want you to watch this video right here on how to rank number one with Google Shopping Ads because this keyword planner strategy directly ties into it and whatever you do here can help you rank number one very quickly.